A warm greetings to one and all present here. It is indeed my honor to be hosting the 13th Dada Nari Kursani Festival Bidhi Manthan State Level Virtual Mood Code Competition. First and foremost, I request our principal, Dr. Nilima Chandiramani, Madam, to welcome the esteemed dignitaries and participants. Thank you, Amisha. Thank you, Amisha. Uh, a warm welcome and good morning to our Honorable Justice Abhay Fitsi, to our trustees and residents, Mr. Anil Harish, sir, Mr. Kishuman Sukhani, sir, to the legal experts who are going to judge this competition, to the participating teams, to my students and uh, my staff. A very good morning. Men live. But it is legends like Karamvi, Nari Gursami, who continue to live forever. Our beloved Dada Nari Gursami, he actually brought about the change that he desired in the society, and he has left behind a very rich legacy for the posterity. On this 13th Nari Gursami festival, I stand overwhelmed and humbled. And I extend a very huge, warm, genial, cheerful, and convivial welcome to each and every one of you. First of all, our Honorable Mr. Justice Fitzay, the chief guest for today's function, who has kindly consented to share with us his pearls of wisdom and to inaugurate this moot court competition. A warm welcome to you, sir. Our guest, of honor, our, guest, our guest of honor, Mr. Anil Harish, sir, the internationally renowned tax scholar, advocate, and our dynamic, energetic, and meticulous president and secretary, uh, president and the trustee of the HSNC board, who has sponsored this event year after year. Our guest of honor, Mr. Kishu Mansukhani, our ever amazing and ever supportive trustee and past president of the board. Sir, without you, this event is always incomplete. Thank you for being with us year after year. I also thank our legal scholars who have sacrifice their weekend to be with us to judge this competition today and tomorrow. Without you, this event would not have been conducted. Coming to our 26 energetic and enthusiastic participating teams, this event would not have been organized had you not participated. And last but not the least, to my wonderful students and staff, without whom we could not have planned this particular event or even executed an event of this magnitude. Now, just a word to the participating teams. It is not necessary, nor is it possible, that each one can be numero uno. What matters is not winning. What matters is participating and challenging yourself. Challenge yourself and compete against yourself and not against others. As I said, it is participation which matters and which counts. With these words, I look forward to a rich learning, experiential learning for all of us. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Madam, for your beautiful words. Now. I take this blissful opportunity to pay a tribute to our beloved Dada Nari Gursahani by bestowing his encomiums in whose memory we organize this event every year. Words are inadequate to describe this remarkable personality who was an institution in himself. This commendation cannot bring justice to someone who was in one moment so many things, a legal luminary, a crusader of downtrodden and underprivileged, beacon of hope, and a Masiha of Sindhi community. Yet, a humble attempt is being made to put in words his legacy so as to inspire others. Dadanari Gursani was born on 2nd of September, 1927 in Nawabshah Sindh. 
His father was a very respected and learned advocate. Academically, he was a bright and active student. It was his good fortune to have an ideal teacher who played a huge role in shaping Dada's destiny to the right path. At the tender age of 14, he was imprisoned for his anti-imperialist activities under the Quit India Moment, which during that time also held ground in sin. Dada passed his LLB from Ferguson Law College in Pune. A giant among lawyers, Dada Nari Gursahani was a complete lawyer, well-versed in practically all fields of law. Dada was not only a good orator, but was equally good at his pen. No wonder representations drafted by him carried weight and helped solve many problems of the needy, even at the levels of High Court and Supreme Court. For Lok Prata, as he was called by many, no nook or corner of the country was too far and no rehabilitation impossible where his dispersed, distressed and dislocated community required his help. As a result of partition, lakhs of Sindhis left their motherland sin and migrated to India. They were accommodated in different military camps as refugees. Dada's spiritual guide, Bhai Bhagwan Das, inspired him to do social service. And thus, he rendered unconditional seva to them. Dada enjoyed august positions in innumerable institutions, associations, organizations, etc., the list of which is inexhaustible. Dada Nadi Gursani was an advisor for legal affairs to the state government, leader for Maharashtra State in Bombay High Court, and a member of the State Board for Linguistic and Religious Minority, constituted by the Government of India. He was honored the Samman Patra by the CM of India. A silver salver was also presented to him by the CM of Maharashtra on the occasion of Silver Jubilee of India's independence. An eminent advocate, patriot, fearless freedom fighter, and a leader to the entire Sindhi community. Dada Nari Gursani is the first Sindhi who was awarded a cash prize rupees 2 lakh and a silver plate by Hargobind Foundation in recognition of his dedicated and devoted service to the community. A truly inspirational human being, saint for some and hero for others, lives in, in our heart forever. Moving on, it is indeed our honor and privilege to be graced by the presence of one of the most distinguished former Bombay High Court Judge, Honorable Justice Abhay Thipsesa, is a chief guest for today's event. Honorable Justice Thipse completed his BALLB and enrolled as an advocate in the year 1979. He practiced in the civil and criminal courts for a decade. He was appointed as a Metropolitan Judge in the Judicial Services on 27th of August, 1987 sir was promoted to the senior bench in 1994 where he handled complex trials in respective offenses investigated by the cbi he was further appointed as a judge of the bombay city civil and sessions court in 1997 as a judge of special court under maharashtra control of organized crime act 1999 and as a principal district and sessions judge in 2007 some of the important cases handled by him include Best Bakery case, trials in respect of defamation of dignitaries, trials of Tantric Chandraswamy, an appeal against the order convicting Anna Hazare. He was elevated to the High Court as a judge in 2011, wherein he handled various types of criminal litigation, such as bail applications, criminal appeals, anticipatory bail, criminal revision applications under Section 482 of CRPC, writ petitions under Articles 226 and 227, and election petitions. He was also appointed as a judge of special court under trial of offenses relating to Transactions in Securities Act 1992, wherein he held trials relating to financial scams of thousands of crores of rupees. Sir was transferred to the Allahabad High Court in 2016, where he did an extensive criminal and civil work, including writs. He retired on 9th of March 2017. Post retirement, he is doing clinical. He is doing legal consultation and arbitration work. He also heads a free legal aid clinic. Sir is currently the chairman of the committee of, to monitor implementation of animal welfare laws. He's an ombudsman of a deemed university. He's on the advisory committee of DM Harish School of Law and on the advisory board of a reputed law reporter. Sir has attended numerous seminars and programs on legal topics as a guest speaker, the list of which is inexhaustible. Interestingly, Sir is also an internationally rated chess player. He has made a mark in the game in different capacities, such as a player, coach, and organizer. 
sir has been conferred with dadoji kondev award that is the best coach award for his work as coach by the state government sir we are delighted to have you with us today sir i request you to please address the gathering yes uh, thank you very much uh, i think we have uh, to uh, make a little change in the schedule because i had uh, requested uh, dr chandiramani to change the schedule as i have to leave uh, for a meeting uh, quite early anyway i am delighted indeed delighted to be here as a chief guest and to deliver the inaugural address for the 13th 13th vidhi mantan uh, inaugural ceremony of vidhi mantan which is a moot court it is beginning with a moot court competition i guess that there are many other activities uh, to follow uh, i don't know about it but the inauguration of uh, moot courts would be the first thing that comes to my mind uh, as a part of the vidhi mantan now about nari gursani unfortunately i could not have personal interaction with him because when i joined the profession he was already a great eminent figure in the profession and we were all juniors not having any direct contact or uh, occasion to speak to him but i distinctly remember that when there were some problems about the seniority of judges and the litigation even went to the supreme court of india one of my colleagues had consulted uh, nari gursani ji and he had given valuable advice to us uh, in support of our contentions because that judicial officer a friend of mine and my case was uh, similar and he had consulted uh, nari gursani i fully agree that he was an expert in all the branches of law though he did criminal work very little and since after joining the bench i mostly did criminal work i have had no occasions to actually view him in action but he was such a known personality i remember uh, when he passed away the bombay bar association uh, gave a great tribute to him and many good things about him were said uh, i fully agree with that and i always feel that i miss the opportunity to personally interact him in connection with any matter anyway moving further when i got this invitation i did not know much about this nari gursani law college because it is situated uh, at ullas nagar and i i never had any occasion to visit that but i called for some information and whatever i learnt about the college i am deeply in, impressed by that in fact i thought that this is virtual instead of that had it been physical i would have enjoyed it more i would have visited the campus and probably that have would have given me more delight so i think that in future we will have occasion to visit the campus uh, i am impressed by the activities which are carried out by the college now you know this uh, let us talk about the moot courts now because uh, usually as a chief guest i would speak in the end and then i would be able to deal with the topics made out or the points made out by the previous uh, speakers but now i don't have that benefit so i will straight away come to the uh, point of moot courts and what i feel about legal profession generally i will discuss that because i always enjoy talking to the legal students and young lawyers see uh, these moot court competitions you know are very common now and there is a lot of material available on what is moot what is to be done but when i did law this was very rare i mean it was a very optional thing in which nobody paid any attention that makes me remark generally about the legal education that in our time what it was and today what it is is totally different our times nobody took it very seriously including the institutions themselves uh, usually there would be no separate buildings for the law colleges and they would be hosted uh you know in the premises of arts or science college after their hours secondly the attendance was also not very strict there were no full time professors very busy advocates sometimes used to come and deliver lectures moreover what was important is that very rarely 
the persons joining law course had an intention to practice in the profession there were few exceptions like i wanted to practice from the beginning then there used to be children of eminent judges solicitors they would be interested in uh, but others were uh, many of them already were working somewhere and then they just wanted a degree of llb as an additional qualification to advance uh, to in uh, their job only rather than taking up this profession secondly i find that the uh, work for lawyers is much uh, increased now at that time it was not so much of course at the top there were very good lawyers and there was work with them but the average lawyers earnings were not very impressive so as to uh, you know aspire people to join the legal profession and uh, with the waiting period in our society even our parents want that you settle early in life that is what we look at but uh, unfortunately in legal profession it does take time and uh, therefore for whatever reasons it was not a very great thing that admissions were easy also but now i find it has undergone a tremendous change when i attended many moot court competitions to judge or to inaugurate <coughs> i found the students so well prepared just excuse me so well prepared and conversant to it even the principles of international law that i was really impressed see in our times what was happening is that it was not uh, thought that the skills of advocacy need to be trained see legal education is different from the skills of advocacy i want to make a point uh, that i have seen many eminent uh, uh, luminaries but who never appeared in court they only used to do drafting and their drafting was excellent their knowledge of case law was excellent but they were not appearing in the court because whenever they had attempted they had not met with proper success because they lacked the skill of advocacy it is not only oratory or the fluency in speaking there is a uh, way in which your thought building should be consistent logical and it should appeal to the person who is going to decide the matter so these are the skills of advocacy and it is now little surprising that till recently the importance of these moot court competitions was not realized in as much as it was thought that an advocate advocacy the way he argues it's a part of his natural abilities or talent is true to a certain extent but you know that is with respect to other fields also like in sports also there is natural talent a person may have a flair for cricket batting bowling somebody may have uh, these uh, you know talent in carrom chess but all that we never think that it should be left like that without training we do feel that even though talent is there the skill is to be developed by practice by training but like this the skill of arguing the advocacy that was never uh, earlier paid any attention to but now it's a part of the curriculum and an essential part i will not go into the other you know what are the benefits which one goes uh, one gets from uh, participating in moot court competitions as you are well aware this is often discussed uh, there is a lot of material available on internet and all this young generation is much wiser and clever than us to get different sort of material from the internet i would like to speak about legal education generally as i said the standard has uh, improved much now many bright students are also join, joining the legal profession many are opting for a career ignoring the career in engineering and all that which was very rare in our times now i feel that the legal education is different from other types of education i i find that uh, it makes a man complete i have many friends from many fields like uh, there are engineers doctors they are very brilliant equally brilliant they have high academic qualifications but i feel that their knowledge about the nation constitution and consequently the society is too less their opinions on many aspects are absolutely wrong i then used to wonder why they don't understand these basic concepts 
by which our society is governed. The reason is that they don't know law. They don't have basic concept. The knowledge of law enables you to understand how the society works, how the state works. You know, administrative law is nothing but the state in action. You have to study that. And then you develop a sense of right and wrong. What is more important is to know what is right and wrong. See, justice was being administered even when there were no formal laws. So this is something which a man ought to know. Good, what is good, what is bad, what is right, what is wrong. But I find that always it is not the, uh, uh, the same, I mean, for with every person because their notions differ. By studying law, you naturally come to understand what is right and what is good because you know the principles of jurisprudence. What is justice? Where it lies and what are the notions of justice? Like fairness, nobody should be hurt, uh, nobody should be condemned unheard. Then uh, equality before law. All these concepts are many times foreign to the persons who have taken education in other branches. And that is why you will find that in all social movements, lawyers have been on the forefront. Always. Always. Right? You uh, see the pre-independence era also, post-independence also, because they have more knowledge of the society. I wonder when I have seen people saying that the, the police should not be under the minister, but minister should be under the police or some such things. I am sure that a lawyer will not speak like that. He, it is impossible at the lowest level also that lawyer will think like that. But many people say, uh, which is uh, basically against the democracy, because here we rule and our representatives will rule the country. Now, if the representatives are not good, then that is our fault. That's a different matter altogether. But we can't say that the bureaucracy should be above the ministry. But such thoughts, I'm not joking. I've heard from very experienced persons, doctors and engineers, I've heard. They feel that this will solve the problem. Of course, this is just incidental, I'm saying. My point, which I want to emphasize, is that legal education makes you a better citizen of the country. Definitely better citizen of a country because you know what is right and what is wrong. You know how the government is functioning, how it ought to function, what is law, why law is made. All these things are difficult for even intelligent people in other branches of uh, education or knowledge to comprehend. Now, of course, uh, the career wise also, there is a lot of scope now because uh, development of corporate law these national law schools, then uh, the colleges like Nari Gursain College, who, who are taking uh, much interest. There are uh, full-time professors. There are many activities. So the level of legal education has increased. And because of the increasing commercial litigation, there are scopes for employment also for those who do not wish to practice or for whatever reason, they get good employment and they may get good satisfaction uh, there also. Judiciary also is a very good option, I may tell you. It's uh, unfortunately, uh, the people or students from urban area are not very much attracted to joining lower judiciary. In my time also, uh, my cadre, the which cadre to which I joined as a metropolitan magistrate, which was only in Mumbai and not transferable, which was a major factor in my deciding to join the judiciary. But I tell you, the conditions of judicial service have also improved now and therefore that's a very good option it is uh, on par with any other all india service and if you are able to become a high court judge it will surpass all these uh, services you get a constitutional position and which is definitely higher than any position held by uh, anyone in the all india services uh, the society also respects good judges and that is applicable to the lower level judges also the bar continuously judges the judge and uh, if you are an upright judge you are having sufficient knowledge and you are impartial then you are much respected even if you are working at a lower level so these are my few thoughts which i would like to express before the participants who are from taking the legal education some of them i don't know they, they are from which year and all that but anyway i am sure that uh, this would be of some relevance to them because everybody is worried about future. How would I fare? What will happen to me in future? But I tell you that legal profession is today a very good 
I mean, it is it is in a very good position as as a career. It's very good. Previously, it was not that much appreciated, but now career in law is an excellent career. And therefore, I told you what are the courses, various courses, various possibilities which are open to you. Now, you know, uh, some of the things which I would like to tell is, uh, you know, the how to uh, go ahead in your career, whether you uh, decide to practice whether you join a law firm where more drafting work is there. Some people who are interested only in counsel practice, they may join a senior counsel, whatever field you select, or you may become a judge. See, you must first thing is that you must read a lot. See, law is continuously changing, evolving. And therefore, you must keep yourself abreast of all the new developments in law for which you have to have continuous reading. Now, one thing which I will just passingly, because I know I'm not speaking up before uh, judges or a lawyer's conference as such. But one thing is that so many judgments are available nowadays, but reading and understanding what a judgment lays down is really a great art. And you must master that art. You must understand that the judgment is to appreciate, to be appreciated in the context of the facts which are in controversy in that case. Many times I find that only the passages from the law reports or judgments are copied without understanding their meaning. And in my career, I tell you, uh, many advocates who cited a particular authority in their support that actually went against them. And that was so observed in the orders also. That happens because you don't study the facts of the case, which are generally in second or third para of every judgment, of a normal judgment. So you must learn the art of studying the judgment and understanding the principle which is laid down in that. Of course, other reading uh, has to be there. Uh, there is so much to read. There sh you should also read, you know, literature. Command over language is very necessary. Uh, fluency may not be, uh, to a certain extent, it may be natural. But, but command means ability to express, ability to understand what is written is very important and that will increase by your reading. Then, you know, a study of literature will also uh, make you enable, uh, understand human nature also, you know, which is also very vital for uh, this success in legal profession. Uh, many of the senior advocates, I say, uh, I dare say because advocates are there before me, their main strength is that they are able to judge in the best possible way what is passing on in the mind of the judge. That knowledge of the uh, reaction of human beings that what reaction gives would lead to what conclusion that is a part of success because you anticipate what is likely to follow if you say this. Of course, that is all for the future. Now you are uh, at the threshold of your uh, beginning of your career. You are just joining as students. Tomorrow you may become judges. You may become senior counsel. You will become legislator, ministers also. Uh, one doesn't know. Uh, uh, law, everything is open for you. I really uh, wish that I could have remained present had it, uh, and it, it would have been a physical meeting. I would have been happier and uh, I would have seen the participants. Uh, I am sure I don't know the moot court problem, but I am sure that it will be uh, uh, a very good problem, giving much scope to both the sides equally. I wish all the participants good luck. I thank uh, Mr. Mansukani and uh, Mr. Harish for remaining present and patiently hearing my unprepared speech. Uh, so uh, I again thank the principal and the faculty and the entire administrators of Nari Gursani Law College for giving me this honor, I declare that this uh, inaugural ceremony, uh, means, of course, speakers are to follow, but it is inaugurated. The Vidhi Mantan is inaugurated that I declare as a formality in my role as a chief guest. Thank you very much. I would be here for some time uh, till uh, the further program goes uh, till 1130. I will be here. Thank you very much. Once again, I wish all the best to all the participants. Thank you very much.
thank thank you sir thank you so very much sir we were delighted to have you with us the mood food problem is on criminal law i'm sure it will fascinate you interest you and i have made a note we will be very happy to have you physically on the campus <laughs> no no so yeah some other time yes yes on yes, some sir, definitely we would like to have you thank you sir thank you so you much can... sir for your yeah uh you can proceed with your program i may be there because i would like to be here for another 10 15 minutes Yes. Can, I hope I have not taken more time. Not at all. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. It was indeed a learning experience for all the students, all the participants. I'm sure that it will help them to make a wiser choice regarding their career once they step out of the law colleges. And we look forward to have you physically in a college, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for taking some time off from your busy schedule and adorning this event with your memorable presence. Moving on, we are also graced by the kind presence of Advocate Anil Sir and Dr. Kishu Pansukhani Sir as guest of honors for today's event. Advocate Anil Sir is a trustee and president of the HSNC Board. Sir has completed his BA, LLB, and LLM, and is currently a partner of DM Harish and Company Advocates, then founded by his father, Mr. DM Harish. Sir so specializes in the field of corporate law, joint ventures and collaborations, property, mergers and acquisition, demergers, LLPs, taxation, arbitration, exchange control, foreign investments, trusts, wills, and Indian and international taxation. He has been ranked by prestigious legal directory of Chambers and Partners as a leading tax lawyer, having a solid clientele both in India and abroad. He is involved with other institutions as well in the field of legal field as. as a society of india law firms of which he is executive vice president he is also a member of the committee on dispute resolution of the confederation of india indian industry as a specialist in the field of real estate he is involved with the magazine of property scape as well as the accommodation times institute of real estate management anil sir has authored numerous articles which have been published in several leading newspapers and professional journals he is a director of several prestigious public limited companies including hinduja global solutions limited blue star companies limited next digital limited and ma Inter india limited sir is the most sought after speaker in india and abroad and has given several professional speeches at prestigious events such as india calling summit in brussels belgium organized by indian merchants chamber and international fiscal association he has spoken in dubai doha muscat jakarta on several occasions on topics such as pema taxation collaborations and legal requirements to operate a business in india so i request you to enlighten us with your inspiring words honorable mr justice abey tipse mr kishu mansukhani immediate past president and trustee of the hsnc board and ladies and gentlemen Each year, the dedicated and dynamic principal, Dr. Nilima Chandiramani, and the professors and the staff and students of Nari Gursani Law College surpass themselves in the organization and conduct of Vidhi Mandal, the Dada Nari Gursani Festival. This is the thirteenth year of this festival, and each year the competition between the participating teams for the various events and the level of preparation becomes more intense than ever. This festival has become a tradition, a tradition made possible because of those who organize, those who participate, those who judge, and those who inspire and share their experiences with us. Mr. Nari Gursani, senior advocate, was a great lawyer and a great human being, and it is very fitting that this college and this festival are are there and remind us of him. I am very grateful to our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice Abed Tipse, for being with us to inaugurate this festival and for giving us so many thoughts and ideas. And the and the fact that training is very important, even for advocacy. Your lordship's words have been very insightful and thought provoking and encouraging. The role of a judge is indeed difficult. Judges are under such constant and unremitting pressure, with a huge number of cases to decide. 
and all the judgments are subject to so much scrutiny and are permanently accessible. We are so fortunate that our judiciary is so dedicated and we draw inspiration from your example. I would also like to say that I remember reading on the sports pages years ago, the name of Mr. Abed Tipsey. And I did not know it was you, sir. I'm so happy to know that you have been an international chess player. Moot courts are a vital part of legal education. And the moot court culture has developed a great deal. To have 26 teams from different colleges participating shows how much interest there is. And I understand that even more colleges applied, but could not be admitted to the competition. The moot court problem has been very well drafted. The subject relates to the criminal law and relates to a situation that we unfortunately read about too often. Dowry demands leading to assault, burning and death. And I'm sure it will be a challenge not only to the student advocates, but also to those who judge. All of you have spent many hours and many days preparing and all that is now coming to fruition when your knowledge will have to be expressed in just a few minutes. But that is the way it is always going to be be throughout your careers as lawyers. Preparation is extremely important. It is truly said that genius is 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. We expect great things from all the students, those participating in the competition and those organizing it in terms of legal acumen and dedication and a greater understanding of each other, which will truly make the world a better place to live in. Winston Churchill said, that the empires of the future are the empires of the mind. And I'm sure that with your sharp mind, you can truly shape the future. I'm grateful also to all the advocates and others who have so willingly agreed to judge the teams and to grill the students in this mode court and the other events. They give so much and so selflessly in the great cause of education. I also express my appreciation to the professors and others who have guided the students. It is said that lawyers are a Jekyll and Hyde personality. In spite of fighting with each other during the day, they continue as friends in the evening. We want this to continue. You must fight hard in court, but your friendship and respect for each other should be resilient enough to withstand these constant disputes. In fact, it quite often happens that two lawyers can be opposing each other in one matter and then be on the same side in the next matter and settlements are often arrived at because opposing lawyers have a good rapport with each other. This is a video competition, and if you had been meeting personally, you would have been able to make these friendships here. But I'm sure that in other circumstances, some of you will at least interact with each other as time goes on. I wish Nari Gosani Law College, the principal and the staff and the students and participants, all the very best. Thank you so much, sir, for your encouraging words. I'm sure the participants will find it really helpful and all of us have found it. Now? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, no, no, you can go ahead. Yeah. So please, would you like to add something? Or you want to say? No, no, just uh, because uh, what Mr. Hari said, uh, I, because my brother is a grandmaster and he's more known. We both used to play. Praveen Tipse, you must have heard, he's nine times national champion. So I wanted to tell him, that not only he did not know, uh, but I could not uh, tell about my chess talents because there was a grandmaster in the house. So it was very foolish to boast of my achievements in chess. That became the problem. But when I was in the high court, once Mohit Shah had come to the, our chief justice had come to my residence, that time my brother had also come. So then they spoke and all that. And then Mohit Shah suddenly said that there was one Abhay Tipse also. So, so I said, sir, uh, chief, that is uh, myself, you know, I, I am Abhay Tipse. So he said, oh, I didn't know. So just what uh, uh, Mr. Hari said, uh, that just reminded me of that. And uh, sometimes you can't boast of your achievements when the very uh, superior personality is present in your own house. That happened with me. That is why people don't know. So anyway, so thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So after Mr. Mansukani uh, starts, I may, uh, Mr. Mansukani, you may permit me to leave uh, after uh, you uh, start your speech. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. 
Now, I'm delighted to introduce our beloved Kishu sir. Dr. Kishu Mansukhani is the trustee and past president of the HSNC board. His family has been associated with the board from its inception in India and has contributed substantially to it. Srimati Chandibai Himatman Mansukhani College, named after his grandmother, is the largest college of the University of Mumbai. His family has also contributed to the establishment of various libraries, auditoriums, and primary and secondary schools of the HSNC board, including the land of the CHM campus. On the work front, Sir was a member of a small group to establish exports of Tata Group, Telco Exports, which later became the Tata Exports. He was working with the Tata Engineering Company in the senior capacity. It is rightly said that great work follows appreciation. And thus, in recognition of his distinguished work in marketing of Tata Mercedes Benz products, he was given a citation by the German Chamber of Commerce. He is also a recipient of awards from the presidents of Uganda and Seychelles. He is actively involved in the social and humanitarian activities in India and heads charitable trusts, which have, over a period of quarter century, assisted in rehabilitating many individuals and family through education. Sir is also associated with the Sadhu Vaswani mission and has facilitated the establishment of KKI Institute, Pune. Sir has been awarded numerous lifetime awards as well. Sir, we are really obliged by your presence. I request you to please address the students and the participants. Hey, good morning to all of you. Thank you for the Sir, uh, honor to have you with us. Thank you for your words of and guiding us. My colleagues, President Prasir, Dr. Nebina Chalyam, people of Narigo, she put out the camp, distinguished case, teachers and above all, teacher lawyers. Welcome to 13. We celebrate this festival in our most outstanding and connected. Sir, yes. sorry to interrupt you, but your voice is crapping. We are clear. We are unable to hear you clearly. Any better now? Yes. Is it all right? No. Yes, sir, it is all right now. Mr. Gursani was a giant among lawyers. He was well versed with practically every field of law. His family's knowledge of law and persuasive argument enabled him to invest his top most. In New York now, so he came from a very well family. For the tallest camp in town road in China. He was college top of the community during an office partition. He was magnanimous and committed a fight. For the member of our board, board will always be for his selfless service provided to our family. Bond with him so enriching that his loss is irrevocable. He has parted with us, but but contribution will always. Today we fondly remember Kabul Sani, daughter of Lord Sani. She and I have attended this life on the picture. I have pleasure of being on the very program with her. We miss her. Today we miss her. Dear students, as a future lawyers, you are guardians of law and will play a vital role in preservation of constitution and society. Lawyers are individuals who have a wide range of responsibilities and duties when it comes to their profession. Your role in society is even more important as you are acting the voice of others. The most needed commodity in today's world is integrity and ethics. To believe in what is right and to stay right course. Never compromise ethics 
ethics value will mantra of the leaders like you in today and tomorrow the fast moving world dear students you are fortunate to have the privilege of acquiring your knowledge in this great temple of learning under the time to our future leaders of india may be one chief justice or king of all we are abiding be proud of your culture roots and our all be proud of yourself parents and take our power i wish you all i god bless you all and uh may i leave now i think uh, because i wanted to uh, wait till mr mansukhani and mr hari spoke uh, can i leave now because i have some other uh, appointment yeah. not a problem sir we are delighted so, with, to with have your permission you. i may be forgiven for leaving this uh, you know halfway uh, but thank you very much great uh, to have you will you bother to meet you again Yes, nice to uh, see you, Mr. Mansukani and uh, uh, Mr. Harish. Of course. Thank you very much and for being the, here. Of uh, course, the dynamic uh, principal, uh, and of course, I know one of the faculty who, through whom uh, invitation was sent to me. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. To have you again. May, may I leave yes. now? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Please. Thank you so much. This brings us to the end of inaugural session. It is a great honor for me to express my sincere and heartiest gratitude to our guest of honors, Anil Sir and Kishu Sir, for taking time off their busy schedule and adorning this occasion with their memorable presence. We express our thankfulness to the D M Harish Foundation for sponsoring the cash prizes for the competition, and also to the D M Harish School of Law for most generously providing us with the technical support. Lastly, thank you so much to all the participants for making this event a successful one. We look forward to have you in our future events too. Good luck to all the participants. Have a great day, everyone.